Hi, welcome to this short video on APA. I'm Paula Cardozo, the main library subject librarian for education. If you're doing the APA module for credit through the School of Graduate Studies Thrive program, this video complements the PowerPoint slides originally provided to us by Rumi Graham. Otherwise, you may have found this video on the education or counseling libguides. For the Moodle folk, the PowerPoint slides explain many of the common APA conventions. This video instead focuses specifically on using our database citation generators and then cleaning them up by checking them against our APA libguide. Like most things in life, APA gets easier the more you use it. So if you're brand new to this or you haven't done it in a long time, that's okay. The most important thing is that you know how to get the help you need. So let's look at some of the online resources available to you. We'll go to the library homepage. So the University of Lethbridge Libraries created a LibGuide to help you with citing your sources in APA. You can either go to the quick link here on the left of the homepage or to the main guides tab. You'll see all the how-to guides right over here in this first column. And we're going to go to the bottom to cite sources and we will choose APA. Like our other LibGuides, we have uh, tabs for different content. So when double checking your citations, hover over the most appropriate tab and choose the most relevant option for what you're trying to cite. You'll often see helpful tips along with examples on how to do the in-text citation that is in the body of your paper, followed by the full reference citation that typically goes at the end. I usually have this page open on my browser and I refer to it constantly as I'm correcting my own citations while I'm writing. So let's go back home to the APA page. Please note that we have some other handouts and links that are uh, available to you here. So a number of different handouts, some links to uh, our APA manuals in the catalog, some of APA's own online help resources, and of course the ever popular OWL Purdue Writing Lab Guide. Okay, here is our first sample citation generator, and this is coming from a summoned search. So I was doing some research on academic freedom, and this particular result came up. I can see by taking a quick scan of the record that it is a book, and furthermore, it is a print book that happens to live on floor nine of the library, and that's its call number. To generate our citation and summon, what we're going to do is go over to this little bar of icons right here and hover over the double quotes, which is cite the citum, and we'll click on it. Then we have to choose the citation format because it does quite a few of them. So we will pick APA. And what it has done is it has generated our citation that will go at the back of our paper in the reference list. So in order to go through this together, what I've done is I've copied and pasted this into a Word document, and we're just gonna go through it element by element to fix it up. So I mentioned that I usually have my APA guide up here. Now, because it is a single author book, that is what I'm gonna pick. Here are a couple of examples of different ways you could go about the in-text citation, which is in the body of your paper, depending on how you write it up. So we're going to have an author surname and a year. And just remember, in the case of a direct quotation from your source, you do have to include the page number. Then, of course, we are interested in the reference citation that's going to go at the end of the paper. So here is a sample of what is involved in each component and how it goes. And then we have another example of a book right here. So I will just bring this down and we will go through piece by piece together. So first glance, looking pretty good. We've got our single author, we've got the surname comma with the initial of the first name. We have our year of publication in parentheses followed by a period. Now here's where things get interesting. So now we're on to the title of our book. 
uh, it's sort of a sentence style capitalization for the title of a book and what we do there is we capitalize the first letter in the title and then when you have a subtitle after the colon you always capitalize that letter as well uh, notice here that we are not capitalizing every single other word but in the case of someone's name a proper noun uh, country name, something like that. Those are types of things that we would uh, capitalize. I sort of went back and forth on whether to capitalize faculty, big F, small f. Sometimes these are debates that we have. If you're really worried about it, check with your prof as they're the ones that are marking it. Um, sometimes I try to find someone else who cited it and go there if I'm really doing somersaults over it. So the title looks pretty good. That's all going to be italics followed by a period. But here's where things get a wee bit dicey. So we have two publication places. So if a publishing house has locations in different countries, you might see this come up um, once in a while. We typically choose the city of publication that is closest to us. So New York. New York is closer to us than Oxford and I'm just going to follow the conventions here in our reference and add the state. Going to get rid of Oxford and that semicolon. I just need the one colon. Now I have Oxford University Press so our place of publication colon and then our publishing house goes right here. And there's only one more thing that we need to do. We need to add a hanging indent. So what we do is we go to the second line. And if you're using Word on a PC, what you do is you hit, hold down Control and then hit T. And that will put a hanging indent on your second and subsequent lines. If you're using Mac on, or sorry, Word on a Mac, it's that funny little command icon plus the T. We've done a citation generator and summon. Now I'm going to go into an education specific database called Education Research Complete. This is an EBSCOhost product. To save some time, I ran a search. I found a result that I'm interested in and now I'd like to cite it. What I'm going to do is click on my title this brings me into the item information record. And if I chose to do a citation from scratch, I could do that probably from here. All of the information is served up to me here. Title of the article, title of the journal it's appearing in. Here's my author. We've got a year of publication, a volume issue number, our page range number. And I'm just going to scroll down to see if they have what's called a DOI. This is a digital object identifier. They do think of this as, I don't know, like a social insurance number for certain uh, electronic resources. This number is supposed to follow this article around uh, for the rest of its existence. And it's something that aids your reader in tracking it down. So I could do that myself or I could get the EBSCOhost database to do the citation for me and that's what I'm going to do. So let's go over to the right and click on Cite. Notice that they've done a warning here to let us know that they do sometimes make mistakes and it's our responsibility to fix it up. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to scroll down to APA and I've already copied and pasted this reference into a Word doc. I'm just going to pull that up now. So it's a good thing that they warned us to double check because I'm seeing a great big mistake here right up at the top. And I think what happened is that O'Gorman has an apostrophe in it and it might have confused the uh, generator a little bit. So I'm just going to go and fix that myself. The year is looking pretty good. Now I guess I should pull up the LibGuide just so that we have something to compare it to. So we're going to go back to that citation guide. And since this is a journal article with one author, let's take a look. There's a little bit of additional information on DOIs and what to do when we don't have one. Your in-text citation info. And then of course your actual examples on how to cite this resource. So let's just pull this down a bit. 
and go through component by component. So I think that the author and the year are looking good. Now, because this is a journal article, we're going to have two titles to deal with. We have the title of the article, and then we have the title of the journal it's appearing in. So we have lots of fixing up to do right here. So notice down here in our reference example, when it comes to the title of the article, we treat it the same way that we chose uh, to do the title of the book. So we only have a capitalization here. We have no subtitle and there are no proper nouns here. So I think I can leave this one alone. However, when we get to the title of the periodical it's appearing in, that's when things get a little bit different. So notice that my generator just didn't really get the, or maybe it's just the way I pasted it in. So the italics go for the title of the journal it's appearing in and also the volume. So I'm just going to italicize that. We don't italicize the issue number. We put that in parentheses. Then we have a comma and the next thing we have is a page range. Our final thing we have to figure out is whether or not there is a DOI and in this case we do have one. It's a little bit long here. So I'm just going to get rid of this extra HTTPS stuff here and then I put in DOI it wanted to capitalize that we're not doing that and then the final thing we do is put in our hanging indent so what do we do if we don't have a DOI so let's just go back and consult the guide and get some advice on that So if it's something that you've retrieved electronically, you don't have a DOI and you've checked, um, what you're going to do instead is say retrieved from and put the URL of the journal um, article there. If it's something that's in print format and there is no DOI at all that you can find, what you'd be doing is ending your citation right after your page range instead. And I just wanted to mention, if you have incomplete citation information and you're not sure if there's a DOI or you just missed something while you were doing your research, that's okay. Don't forget you can contact us at the main research desk through this Ask Us button and we can help you track down the full citation information if that's something that you need. Now we are in a ProQuest product called Education Database. So if we wanted to generate a citation in this one, what we can do is click on the resource we want to generate a citation for right here and click on the site. It has generated an APA citation for me and I would just go through the same steps that I did with my other two examples, cut and paste this, and then I go through step by step and make sure everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. To wrap up, we're back at the APA LibGuide homepage. Besides books and articles, we have examples of many other types of documents that you may need to cite, so be sure to hover over the tabs to see what's there. Let's just scroll down and go back to the OWL Purdue. So just to let you know, this is another solid resource that you can consult. So I'm just going to click here. And in addition to information about how to do citations, they also provide some other larger conventions. So let's just take a quick look at the APA sample paper. And they break down each component for you to see. So understand that this is another resource there that you can consult. We also have APA's resources themselves. So if you find that you're having to cite a resource that's in a format not covered by APA or the APA manual, one thing that you can do is take a look at the APA blog on their website. Sometimes they have examples, especially of newer formats that appear there. And I would say that if you just absolutely can't find an example of the type of resource that you're trying to cite, 
The final authority is, is the person marking your paper, so reach out to them, especially if you think that they're quite strict about APA. And of course, please note as well that we do have some APA help at the main library research desk. Now we don't proofread people's citations for them or generate them for you, but what we can do is help you try to track down a solid example that you can follow to do your own correct citation. So that is the end of this video. Happy citing and thanks for watching.